everybody. Welcome to the Trader Merlin Show. Hope you had a great trading session out there. And judging by some of the uh, cryptocurrency people we have in the room, I'm sure many of you were freaking out a little bit. I was actually pretty happy because I told you I dumped a large portion of it, bought back into a lot of it. I'll explain some of that near the end of the show, but I want to make sure we get to our guest. By the way, shout out to Tomasino. Hope your ankle's doing better. Uh, it looked pretty, pretty, pretty swollen there, girl. Take it easy. Gretchen, Les, good to have you guys with us. Walter, Naum, even though you're in Boston, I'll support you. I'm going to be at a Red Sox game on Sunday. Can't wait for that one. Um, and yes, the Dixie. We watched that dollar fall as well. Maybe Jerry and I will look at that one here in a little bit. We got MTB Man from Texas. Good to have you with us, Marcus. I see all kinds of new people joining me today. If you are new, hit that subscribe button so you see when these shows are posted live and, of course, uh, interact with us as we go through. If you're new, uh, oh, JP Morgan's here. Good. Well, let's talk about your earnings, JP. Um, if you are new to the show, if you type in question marks before your question directly to me, that way I, I might be able to see them easier because uh, a lot of people are typing in comments and chatting as we go. So let's get things rolling. Uh, it's going to be a, a show based off of trend today, which stemmed from a listener question, and I'll get to that one here in just a second. And if you are a fan of Power Trading Radio, you uh, have seen this gentleman on that program before, but joining me from, I, I'm assuming he's out in Chicago today, we've got Mr. Jerry Baldwin joining us. Jerry, how you doing? Roland, I'm fantastic. How are you doing? It's great to be here with you. Good, good to have you. I, I, no live video today, so I'm sure we don't get to see the, the wonderful son of Chicago, but how you been? I've been great, and I am in Chicago, and uh, yeah, we're missing some, uh, next time we do this, we'll make sure to have some pictures. You and I have always done a great job about putting some pictures up of some of our most recent fun outings, so uh, yeah, always a blast to be with you, but things are, are great, excited to be with you, excited to be in the markets. I tell you, with the recent COVID, our exciting outings are like, I wore my mask to go out on my back patio, you know, that type of thing, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> True, I know what you're saying. It's uh, it's nice to see things finally starting to open back up. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been a while. So we're gonna be uh, we're gonna have to do double next time. Sounds good. All right, uh, just briefly, uh, I want to go over three questions. I always call this a trader profile since this is a new show and your first time on here. I will uh, ask you the same three I usually ask new guests, which are question number one: How long you've been trading? Question number two is: What asset class do you trade? And number three would be: What is your trading style? Sure. Okay, well, first of all, how, you know, it's great to be here, and, and how long I've been trading is, uh, it's hard to believe, but it's about 16 years, a little over 16 years now I've been doing this. So, I uh, got into the markets, uh, you know, right around the 2000, a little after, and, uh, you know, great ride there. As far as the, the asset class, I started out with trading stocks, so I'm, I'm proficient in that, and then I learned options after that, uh, was teaching options for quite a while. Um, enjoyed that as well, but I, I currently and, and really happily have found what I I feel that fits my personality and my lifestyle the best, and that's trading futures. And um, and trading futures, specifically the NASDAQ, is the one that I really like trading. And as far as style, it's, it's very intraday. Um, I'm one of these that will use a one-minute candle um, for an entry and you know for an entry, but I will use some of the larger time frames to determine the trend, which is things that you and I will go over today. And it's, it's, it's in doing that and understanding that, that trend on the bigger time frames where I've seen my trading even go to another level, which has been, you know, really rewarding. So, um, yeah, style is, is definitely active day trading, uh, futures on the asset class, and, and specifically within the futures, I just see a lot of movement in the, the NASDAQ, the NQ specifically for those futures traders out there, and that's, uh, that's where I find myself. Nice. I, I like that you've narrowed it down. I mean, you started equities, go to options, and then whittle it down to something that works for you and found your little niche. And I, you know, that's something I want to emphasize to everybody here, and I'm sure most of you know this as well if you've watched the show for any amount of time, is just because Jerry comes on and says, hey, the NQ's for me, that doesn't mean the NQ's for you. There is a discovery process where you find out uh, you know, it's it's like dating. You'll find that a certain type fits you, and it, while it may not be for other people, it might work well for you. And you have to discover that process. So it took you a while to do it, but uh, glad glad you got it narrowed down. And yes, uh, we've got a couple co guests commenting on the one minute time frame, which we'll talk about a little bit more as we progress. But let me uh, let's go to the topic du jour, which is uh, a question that stemmed from a listener. So let me see if I can get that question up here. This is from Tim. Nope, that's not the one. Uh, Tim says, I've been using moving averages to help me stay in, in trades longer. Are there any other trend tools you find helpful? Which, of course, leads right into today's topic, which is trend following tools with Jerry Baldwin. So to Tim's question there, are there specific tools that you use for, for trend following? Yes, Merlin, there, there's a number of them. Um, and, and I talk a lot about them uh, on my, my Instagram and on my coaching site, which we'll get to in a little while. but. A couple of the ones that, that I find are really useful um, is, first of all, as is, is simple as it might sound, is the slow stochastic, when used correctly, 
can be a really powerful trend uh, trend trading uh, device to you. So hmm. the stochastic, yeah, the stochastic slow. When you study up on that and understand exactly how that ranges between the 20s and the 80s, it's it's really it can be very positive. So that would be one that that I've actually become a really big fan of. Um, and while I'm going down the list, there's, there's really two others that come to mind before I get into the the actual software that I use that helps me be on the right side of the trend, you know, certainly more times than not. Um, one of the other ones, though, as simple as the MACD appears, again, when that's used correctly, uh, there's, there's little bars that go on the line of the MACD, and you can program TradeStation to actually come up green and red, so depending on which color it is, it shows you which way it's trending, and it is, it is funny how accurate that can be, again, when you're keeping in mind some of the larger time frames and, and, and going in line with them, like having the wind at your back. So that would be the second one. And then, and then finally, the, the other one that I found, again, within TradeStation, which I, I just find to be a fantastic platform, is uh, it's called Consecutive Ups and Consecutive Downs. And it's literally a trend recognition indicator that's within TradeStation. It's, hmm. you know, it's on the, uh, the TradeStation application, but it's, it's consecutive ups, consecutive downs, and they literally will place a dot you know, at the beginning of what is a new trend on any time frame, and it's uh, you can you can you know customize it to go, you know, after two closes in the same direction or three closes in the same direction, whatever you'd like. And 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 again, in doing this, I found a couple of ways that that I, that I find work well for me and what I'm doing. But that would be the third one. Like I said, you can find it right within the indicator platform, or right within the indicator um, on the TradeStation platform. So that would be another great one. It's funny. I'm looking, and it's funny. Uh, I I think it's because I have an old fashioned. I know everyone gives me shit because I use TradeStation 9.5, and like you got to be at least on version 10. But uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, <laughs> I don't see the uh, consecutive ups and downs. But we don't need to have all three of those on here. Uh, what I did add, guys, is, and I think that this is interesting, because most people, I think, the staple of trend following diet is going to be moving averages, as as Tim was saying. So whether you're using 20, 50, 200, you know, whatever the numbers are for you. We've got uh, Mr. Wendell with us again who likes to use uh, a variety of different uh, moving averages there to help with his trends and turning points. But, you know, for most people that's the easy one because that's built off the historical prices. Now, Mac MACD is, of course, derived, for those that don't know, it's derived from moving averages. It's the 12 and the 26 period moving averages and taking the distance between those two. Now, the one that I find interesting here. Uh, as a trend tool with stochastics, because stochastics is historically a an overbought, oversold, you know, is it heating up too much type of tool? What is it that with the stochastics that you're using for for a trend following piece? Basically, I'm I'm, I'm combining the consecutive ups and downs with the trend. So you know what, Merlin? And by the way, I, I misspoke. Don't go. It's not under indicator in trade station. It's under show me. Ah, okay. So, yeah, my apologies. I, I was thinking indicator, but if you go under show me. Um, you will, you should be able to see consecutive ups and downs. Because I think I might be using the nine five as well. I like that, like you, and I don't think I've ever gone higher. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, consecutive ups and downs. Check it under the show me, and I think you'll see it under there. So you guys um, notice, uh, I'm, I have it full screen here, so I just added it. You guys may notice I've got quite a few things on the screen, so maybe we can take them one by one. Uh, let me turn off the MACD here, and, and anytime, um, Joe, if you want, you can just say, hey, if you look at the MACD, I'll bring it back up. But I'm just trying to get some real estate free here. Um, you guys notice I put this little tiny red dot on this low. You see these little low points here uh, on this daily NQ. It's putting a red dot there when I added that consecutive downs. Now I'll go in here and I'll insert consecutive ups and that should probably give me a little, we don't have any, well small little green dots over here. Um, okay, so I've got those added on here. So how does that help us? So basically when you see a new trend starting as um, you know, a candle closes at the bottom of the of the sto stochastic. Say, for example, right around the 20 to 25. Once it starts building momentum there, it generally goes from that 20 up to the 80. And and sure enough, you're talking about you know in some cases a really significant move. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how you would combine that. Use that. Use those consecutive ups and downs. Uh, once you start uh, start seeing a new trend develop. Uh, in the lower part of that stochastic, around the 20, maybe 25, it goes to 80, and you'll see almost cons almost every time it'll pause there then. So, but in that meantime, you're talking about on a one minute chart, it can be a substantial move. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, a quick question here from Red Wings. He says, uh, what time frame for trend if your entry's on a one minute? Yeah, so that's that leads me into the, in, into the software that I'm using basically. And, 
it, it, again, you know, if you go to my on my Instagram, I've got a link tree, and, and the Instagram is Trading Coach Jerry. So it's Trading Coach Jerry, and if you click on the bio there and on the link tree, there's going to be two pages there. One of them is going to be my personal coaching site. The other one is going to be what's called Trend Trader Pro, and that is a specific indicator. Uh, that I bought a while back and and I find to be extremely useful and what that does is it it shows you not it doesn't only give you buy and sell signals on whatever time frame you're looking at but I find it to be really useful in terms of it identifying the overall trend for me so what it does is it basically shows you four larger time frames than what you're trading and it's either simply you know a mix of colors it's all green or it's all red and again you can see an example of that if you click on the link tree in my in my Instagram, but it'll show. So, for example, they call it a heat map. So, if you have an all green heat map and you're looking to go long, the probability of, of that trade working is is really high because you've got you know larger time frame trends in your in your favor. So, um, and then you know obviously coincidentally coincidentally then if you're going short, you're looking for an all red heat map. If the heat map is mixed, I try to stay out of trades, and it, it takes some discipline to do that. But it, it, I find. You know, whenever I get um, the days where you're not as profitable as you want to be, it's when you're screwing around with a heat map that there's no there's no strong decision on. You know, it's mixed in other words. So, so yeah, so that's that's what I use. It's got the four time frames. Now, specifically, the question is, you know, what time frames am I using beyond the one minute to determine the larger time frame trend? And mm -hmm. I like going right around somewhere around five, fifteen, thirty, and I'll use sixty. So I'll use four of them, and sixty would be my largest time frame that I would use. So that's when they're all in sync and you're timing in on a one with one of those, like even the strategy we just talked about as far as you know consecutive ups with the stochastic, it's um again just you know we're trading probabilities, right? So the probability of the trades working are, are extremely high. Wow, um, cool. I'm glad that you shared those time frames because like for for most people and and I and I lump myself into this just because I was a high speed day trader back in the late 90s and I was using tick charts. Then went to one minute and then I realized that just one minutes were even too stressful for me. Uh, I want to make sure everybody understands. Jerry's a fast-paced guy, right? Jerry's constantly got to be moving, go, 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 go. So for him, one minute is probably palatable. I think for most people, one minute time frame is probably going to be way too much for you, too many, uh, what we saw called market noise and jigs and price acts, and all of a sudden get jigs you out and, and you're left holding a little bit of a loser and it does exactly what you thought it was going to do, uh, but you're out because your stop loss got triggered on a, such a small time frame. So uh, before you jump down to the one minute, make sure you guys are comfortable with a little bit of a higher time frame, which is going to be less stress for you. Um, but I think Jerry thrives off of stress. He just takes it out in the gym, right? <laughs> That's true. I haven't missed a day in the gym, I'll tell you that. And when and when they weren't open, I was doing this at home at the house or at the park, you know. So <laughs> yes, Merlin, I, uh, I I I do enjoy it. It's uh, but I love what you said. It makes so much sense and. And that's something that took me time to learn because you know you want to look at just a one minute and trade that one minute and, and you can do that but if you want to increase your probabilities be aware of what the larger time frames are doing and that's where that that heat map from trend trader pro has, has really been useful to me because now all of a sudden if i've got an all green heat map and i'm just looking at taking longs not only do the trades work more you know not only is the um you know the probability greater of the, of the trade working but the moves are greater you know that your your guy who sent in that that question a little bit ago about you know, using a moving average to stay in trades, that's one of the really powerful things I found about this is that the trades, you know, in some cases, they just, they they're, they can be so much longer. I've mm -hmm. learned, and again, one of the things I teach in my coaching sessions is as far as, you know, getting, you know, profitable at a one-to-one, -one, but then letting that other one go, um, and in some cases, you can see some crazy returns because you've already paid yourself, and you can let that other one go, and some of the moves, especially in the last, you know, month and so, it's just been, it's crazy how, how far some of these things can move. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll ask for my viewers because I know it's a question that they ask almost every single guest I get on the show, especially the new guys. Um, you've gone through this, uh, you've run the gamut almost of asset classes, starting off with uh, stocks and then going into future uh, options and then in futures. What's your take on digital assets? You, are you a uh, are you a crypto guy yet? Have you converted? <laughs> you know, Marl, I, I haven't for whatever reason. I know you you've loved it since before it became popular, and I've got friends who are loving it. Um, I guess it's one of those things where you find something that you like and you kind of just stay with it. So I, I really have not. I, I, I love what you're doing and I love what you know you're sharing on the on the show with the cryptos. But for for whatever reason, I guess I'm just happy and, and I'm I'm doing well with what I'm doing. So I have not. Um, I've really not branched out much. All right, just just curious. Um, let's see. 
Red Wing said, what is the coaching site? Uh, if you go to, he had his Instagram page up there, or I had his Instagram page up there a little bit ago. If you go to Instagram, uh, Trading Coach Jerry, as you guys see here, there's a link tree down at the bottom. If you click on that, there's two things here. It'll get you uh, the, the Trend Trader Pro he was talking about, and also um, you can get more information on his uh, his coaching there. So Worked with the guy a long time. He's got a passion for what he does and a lot of great information out there. Um, in this market, we've seen some, some pretty interesting moves happen recently. Obviously, the stimulus and just unbelievable market push to the upside. Are you still um, putting a lot of emphasis on those trend-relating softwares, or is it just price action at this point? Because it seems like every day is an update. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a great point, really. It's, um, you know, because the time frames that I'm using on the on the one minute, and then, you know, again, you're going 515 somewhere, and the larger was being the 60, they, they do change a little bit. So it, it does seem like every day is an update, and, and it probably turns out that it is, but there are parts of the day where you still can't take some shorts. So yeah, the overall bigger tr you know trend certainly is bullish. Um, but as a matter of fact, there was there was a nice there were a couple of nice really short trades today. We had an all red heat map, so I, I was relying on my on my trend trader pro to to kind of guide me with that. And then I used um, my um, you know my stochastic and a couple of the other indicators to actually participate in a couple of really nice shorts. And um, so yeah, no, they, because the time frames are a little bit smaller, it's it's been uh, you know, you can definitely do it. But like an example, uh, last week is, is like what you're talking about, where we had an all red heat map in the beginning of the day. And by the end, you're taking a long, you know, at, uh, at 1230 Pacific time, and you're, you're riding everything out for a bunch of points to the long side, because that's, you know, the way the market had changed to, you know, to go. So, um, yeah, just really using using the tools, trusting them. And uh, I, I, as you know, and for those of for those of you guys who don't know, Merlin and I first met, you know, years ago, and, and actually I met him in a trade plan class, and it was it was awesome. And I, oh, yeah. I, I always forget that story, that story you know? dude. I always forget that one. Yeah, I love that because that it was the first time I met you, and you were great. And I I took a lot of great things away from you. You know, it's just it was fun to be in there, and um, so being a part of that trade plan class, just following that trade plan, and and just really, I, I've really tried to automate my trades. You know, I mean, I know I'm not smarter than the market, and so. Once you understand that, and you just kind of learn to trust your trust your charts, and then sometimes not trade. You know, if you see like for example an all mixed heat map, you know, just walk away and do something else. And when you can establish that discipline, and just I, I love the the uh, the flying analogy. You know, the, the pilot analogy. You know, people talk about flying an airplane, and you know, the next time I'm on a plane, I hope the pilot is using his instruments to trade to, to to fly and not his his emotions. So I try to trade the same way. You know, just follow what I'm doing and. Uh, if you get stopped out, you get stopped out. But most of the time, the trades are going to work when you follow, you know, the rules that you write off. So a lot of that I took from your class. You know, your trade plan class was awesome. And, you know, once you put it together, you put it down on paper, and then you actually start to really execute it and follow it. It's, uh, you know, it works. Yeah, and, and, if, and I think you said it works. And if it doesn't work, that's, that's great, too. Because if it doesn't work, then you can go back and review and figure out which of those steps are not working. That... Again, I, I may overemphasize that on this show over the years is the inability for most people to go back through and say, okay, what's not working? You know, why am I losing? Uh, they're just saying, I want to win. What can I do to win? It's like, well, usually the the loss side is what will make you winners. If you can just reduce the amount of losses, you're not going to eliminate them altogether. We all know that. Um, but if you can start to keep those things manageable and just move on to the next trade, then ultimately in the long haul, you'll do well. I mean, to me, it's the Las Vegas analogy. I, I was doing an interview recently and the guy said, well, what's the di what is your thoughts on gambling? And I thought, well, trading is not gambling. For most people, it is gambling. And a gambler generally loses money over time because it's just the law of averages. In the case of the casino, you're looking at businessmen, analytics, computers, having run all those numbers and said, okay, what's the, the probability that we're gonna lose on this game? Now, they're probably not gonna find a game that gives you better than a 49% chance of winning as a patron of a casino. They know that the longer you play those things, the more you're gonna lose. And if we've come in it with that objective and saying, hey, I'm just gonna hit it and get lucky, you'll lose over time. Good luck, keep doing what you're doing. But if you can refine your strategy and say, okay, I'm not gonna put those odds in my favor of even 51% winning, you'll do well over time as long as those losses aren't big. And uh, most people just don't make that change, and I wish that they would because it would uh, change their lives forever. It's great stuff, Merlin, and I, and I love what you're talking about, and you're, and you're 100% on, and, and that's where that risk management becomes, you know, that's that's a class in and of itself, which I, again, I try to touch on in my coaching sessions, but that how to manage a trade once you're in it, and in some cases, 
you know, not in some cases have a losing trade and still become a winner can be done if you're if you're managing the trade correctly. Meaning, you know, you're taking profit at a certain point, and you're adjusting your stop. Um, it, it, it's amazing, you know, when you see some, you know, people who, like you said, really know what they're doing and they're playing the analytics. How you can actually do that, and that's uh, that's huge. And and that trade review that you're talking about, again, that was one of the things that I that really hit me as I was continuing to study trading and continuing to study probabilities and. You know, going back, and I'm a, I'm a huge NFL guy, I'm a huge National Football League fan, and, and I love the every aspect of the game and the coaching and the playing. And, you know, the review that they do and the game preparation is so similar to, to trading. You know, the film review after a game on a Monday, for example, and it's the same thing with trading. You know, you go back and, like you said, review your trades and find out exactly, you know, did you follow your guidelines, first of all, and your rules? And, you know, were you just stopped out because you were stopped out, or did you do something? Did you miss something? But playing that back and one of the things I love, um, so with this Trend Trader Pro indicator that I'm using, uh, it has to be linked up with Trading View, which is again you can look all this up. It's all on my on my Instagram. But um, under Trading View, and, and and there's other places who have this, but Trading View has the replay feature, so you can mm -hmm. literally set a candle up at a certain point, and then it literally replays for you at whatever speed you want. But in terms of you know game film and going back and looking to see exactly you know how your trades did and, and why they worked or why they didn't. It's, it's really a cool way to review like a pro, you know, like a, like a national football league team would do on a Monday after a Sunday win or loss. So it's uh real value you're sharing with people. That's awesome. Yeah. Not only do they do a review of the game they play to see what they could have done better, but I think what's really important is they, they, do so much game footage on the team they're about to play so they know that okay with this quarterback when he looks that way he's always throwing this way you know th to me that's the same thing we need to know the assets that we trade and you notice a lot of the guests on the show uh, tend to stick with a, either a very small basket of securities or just one or two. You know, Jerry's saying pretty much NQ is kind of his bread and butter. I'm sure he will stray from that when the opportunity presents itself. But when you do that, you start to learn the characteristics of those beasts. And uh, I got a co comment on this one here real quick. There was a comment that came through. Jerry says, uh, this is Jerry G, one of our viewers. He says, pilots I hear become good traders because they follow rules and protocol. Very true. Uh, from the pilots that I've trained over the years, yes. Although I will say one thing, engineers tend to do well, but they also are challenged because for an engineer, one plus one is always two. It cannot change, otherwise everything that you build as an engineer is different. And what the crazy thing about trading is, anybody who's been doing this a long time will, will, will agree with me, one plus one in the market is any number that the market wants it to be that day. So it, it throws those variables out the window and you're left shaking your head sometimes going, that should have been a two and it was a 13 today. How did that happen? That's just 100%. the market. <laughs> yes, very true. No, great point, great point. Very true and uh, yeah, yeah, no, great analogies. Uh, Alan here has a question. Since you were talking that you predominantly like the day trading side of things, he says, does Jerry have rules in place to keep you from over trading? What, maybe we can say, what's a typical day look like for you? How many trades do you take and how many positions do you have open? What's a typical day? Yeah, it's, it's a great point. And one thing I wanted to add to that as far as, and again, it, this came from you in the trade plan class, but I'm glad to hear that a lot of people are narrowing down what they're trading because one of the things that I would see in the classroom was that there were, People were trying to trade too many things. Not only, not only more than, tr not only trading more than one thing at a time, which to me is, for me, it's crazy. I can't, I couldn't do it. But, but just trading too many things, I think you can become overwhelmed. So to hear that people are narrowing it down, and and like you said, I've narrowed it down to maybe just one asset or maybe one or two assets. Um, you know, that's a real, that's a real positive thing. So, and I think once you narrow down that trade plan and you know specifically what you're looking for um, in terms of risk reward and probabilities. Um, I, I say a typical day for me is is maybe two to three trades. I would say between one and three trades. So if I hit something, I like the open. I'm looking for something very specific at the open. If I don't get it, I will wait till you know seven seven thirty Pacific time, and I will I will find something then. But one of the things that and again that has really helped me is this Trend Trader Pro software. And the reason that I say that is that it's helped me. If you're only trading when you have a, a heat map that is in full alignment, meaning all green or all red, right there you're going to narrow down the amount of trades that you're taking. Because if you're disciplined enough to not take trades when that map is mixed, meaning that the trend on the larger time frame is undecided. That's really what they're telling you. And, and when you think about that, that's huge. Because what we want to do is make this as easy as we can. So if everybody's buying, then I'm going to buy in and I'm just going to take the ride. That's you know I don't I don't have to be smarter than anybody else. I just want to be profitable. And, and it's the same thing if people are selling, 
I want to be a seller, you know. So I use that heat map. So that's probably the, the best tool that I have in terms of helping me from over trading. Um, and, and if you're not using something like that, then just really have specifics in terms of your what your setup or setups are and then only take them. You know, only find, like you and I have talked about, the best setups that work, go back and study them and narrow those down and then only take the ones that work. And if you do that, you're, you're going to be more profitable. You'll trade less, which is cool. And you'll, you'll find yourself enjoying more of your day going out and enjoying life, which, which is what you should be doing anyway. Yeah. What's your take on um, on overnights? I know you started. And the reason I ask this is one of the things that I found changed a lot for me was I, I was predominantly a, I wouldn't say predominantly, I was 100% a out by the end of the day trader. And then I started to take things home overnight with some mixed success. But uh, as a day trader, you know, you have this specific goal and objective saying, I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna get out on whatever time frame it is, but I'm out by the end of the day. Now, do you find yourself sometimes in a position where, let's say you're in the NQ, it's running, it's really starting to move, and you go, you know what? I've got a runner on right now, and I may have taken 10 ticks out of it, but boy, this thing could turn into 30 or 40. I'll keep it overnight. Do you do that type of thing? And if you do, how do you manage those positions? Yeah, great, great question, Merlin. And I was the same way. I, I didn't trade beyond, you know, 115, you know, ever. And and now I will find myself doing that. But the one thing I, I make sure to do is, you know, if I'm doing multiple contracts, even two contracts. And um, one of the things I wanted to mention too for, for you know, anybody who's new or trading in the markets, you know, the NASDAQ moves. And, you know, if you're not ready to go live with the with the NQ, you know, don't. But right. what I would, I would um, certainly consider is check out the micros now because the micros are liquid and, and the micros give you the ability to trade more than one contract and still manage risk. And um, I had done a combine, a trading combine a little while back for a group called Top Step Trader in Chicago, which is fantastic. And they, they put you through a whole combine, you know, they set you up with a futures account and you have to have, you have, to have a specific goal. You have to make a specific goal um, and you can't break any rules. And one of the rules that they have in their trading combine, you have to pass it twice and upon passing it, you get a you get a funded account, and that's something else that I have on my page, which is a really cool you know feature. But the point of the story is that if you have a their their lot their daily loss limit was 500, so if you couldn't exceed that, and if you did, you literally got thrown out of the combine that day. Your account was frozen. I mean, it was really it's it's cool because being a competitive guy and a former you know a current athlete, really, I, I love the competition. So um so the point I'm making is that if you're you know there's days where you know. And again, not so much now, but a little while back, where you know a one-minute candle on one contract to the Nasdaq that could carry five hundred dollars of risk, which is probably too much, you know, more than what you want to take on. So, look at the micros. You know, the the MNQ is a is a great way to trade live, still be profitable, um, but it gives you the opportunity to manage risk. And I will still use the micro if for some reason we're in a real volatile market and I'm trading in that funded account and I can't exceed five hundred dollars or I'm gone then I have to be able to manage risk and the micro is one way to do that. So um, I, I wanted to get that in there for us because that's, that's really useful for any new futures trader. And then as far as answering your question, the one thing I, I, I find is important as far as holding a position into the overnight is um, it, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to make sure that I'm profitable. So for example, if, if I'm taking something in at the 1230 and, I'm, and it's running like you said, um, I will I will lock profit in on at least one contract, move the stop, uh, uh, yeah, the stop to break even, and then let the other one go for like you said, maybe that 30 or 40 extra points. Um, but I will guarantee myself that profit by making sure that I I locked in the profit, move the stop to where you know I can't lose on the trade or, or certainly protect the profits that I've made, um, and then I'll go and. The, the big thing I want to add to that too as far as the overnight Merlin because I, I, I do like the overnight I, I never used to trade it like I said before and, and now I will find myself but just make sure you're trading at a liquid time um, you know like for I'm, tr I'm trying to translate this Chicago time like 7, 8 o'clock at night in Chicago um, is not bad because some of the Europeans or the, the Asian markets are opening so the futures market is good the other thing I find is that that 5 o'clock open um, the same trading plan strategy that I use at 6.30 in the morning when the actual market opens, I use at 5 o'clock, uh, I'm sorry, 3 o'clock Pacific time when the futures overnight session opens. Um, again, the setup's not always there, but when it is, it does work. So I will trade the open of the overnight um, if things line up the way that, that they should. So. Yeah, great question. You got me going for about five minutes, sir. I hope that it's was good. No, it's good. Uh, <laughs> it's good. And there's a bunch of questions coming in from different people, and, and it's it's really critical that 
you understand the asset class that you're trading. Questions come up here multiple times is, you know, why the NQ? And, and, and Brandon Wendell did a really great point early on in this. He says, look, you got to know the risk of each asset class. When you look at NQ, you're, you know, 20 bucks a tick. You look at the YM, you're at five bucks a tick. And the S, uh, uh, or a point, and the S&P is, is 1250 a tick, but if it's point value is gonna be 50 bucks. So you start to figure out how much these things are moving. You go to their daily ATR and you say, okay, here is how much that is going to risk me on an average day. And you'll find that usually the YM is the least risky of the group. And that's not to say that you have to trade the YM. Uh, I think now, as you mentioned with the micros and the minis, it opens up the door to anybody to trade the NQ should they want to. If they were fearful that it moved too much trading a full NQ, okay, well, I'll go to a micro or I'll go to a mini um, and go to something that's a more palatable so that I don't take on too much risk. And yeah, if you trade micros, guy, you're, you're not gonna be making a lot of money. But again, early on, that's not the point. The point is making sure I understand how all of this works and the mechanics behind it. Uh, I think the, the CME did a great job at bringing out those micros to really help people understand how it all works. 100% on all that, Merlin. That's awesome. And you're exactly right in that. And that's that's like we talk about the trade plan class. I mean, that's exactly what that is, is understanding your asset class, how much it moves, and, and identifying the risk. You know, they always say the professional traders identify risk before they identify reward. Is you got to protect yourselves. And like the example of the combine, you know, you have to make sure you're staying within a certain risk parameter or you're gone. And so, yeah, 100% on all that. That's awesome. And it's funny, too. I, you know, I, I felt, you know, you're looking at very little money on the on the micros in most cases, but I tell you what, you start doing maybe two contracts, three contracts, and some of the moves that we're getting, yeah. you know, again, you're not going to make a thousand dollars a day doing it, but you are. You're, there is a, you know, there is money to be made there once you get it down. I wouldn't start there, but again, there is once you start adding those up, you know, it's uh, it turns into it turns into decent little money, and it's and like you said, it's a great way to start while doing, you know, one of the most important things, which is managing risk. Yep, number one, it's something that we, anybody that you see on the show has been doing it for a long time. If, if you ask them what's the number one thing to being successful as a trader and they don't say risk management, then they're not traders. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly, yeah. So, no, such great stuff, Merlin. And, and like I said, thank you for putting the Trading Coach Jerry sign out there. If people have questions for me, they can hit me up on that, on that Instagram site. You know, definitely click on the link tree because look at the Trend Trader Pro um, and then look at the coaching site because I'm doing a lot of things with a lot of, you know, with a few different people just to kind of help people go to different levels and uh, been doing this a long time. So I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of it and, uh, you know, love doing this. I'm, I'm excited about doing another one of these with you. The more the merrier. Next time we'll get Zoom up and you can share, share some charts with us and we'll be doing a bunch of technical analysis stuff. I would love that. I would love that, Merlin. It's always it's so much fun. All right, Jerry. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on today. I appreciate it. Uh, it's been It's been far too long, so hopefully we'll get you back on here in the near future, my friend. That sounds great. Keep up the fantastic work, Merlin. You're the best and uh, and love you and look forward to seeing you soon. All right, buddy. Take care. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Guys, there's Jerry Baldwin. Uh, we taught, we're taught with him for many years on the Trading Academy, as, as happens with many people or many of the instructors. Uh, you know, they've gone off and done their own things, and everybody's going off and doing. Some are still there. Some go off and do their own things. But hey, I figure it's nice to bring on uh, other people to get different perspectives of it. Again, his Instagram was Trader Coach Jerry. I'm gonna encourage him to get something that doesn't require a username like Instagram. Um, so we maybe get you a Twitter or Facebook or something. But Trader Coach Jerry, and you can get more information on all the stuff he's talking about there. Um, I, I, it was interesting hearing him say the one minute time frame. That was one I was like, oh, wow, really? I, okay. Uh, most people that I know nowadays aren't really down to the one minutes. They, they've kind of realized that there's so much noise and movement there. And I know that uh, Alan here was kind of questioning that too. When you are a faster person, I mean, to trade one minute time frames, your reaction times, you have to be so quick in your decision making. You cannot falter. You can't stumble. You can't go, uh, um, what am I doing now? It's just hit the button and go. Um, usually it's keyboard based trading, so mine was all keyboard based. I, I have my, I still have hotkeys on my computer, but um, I don't use them that often. So I think it fits his personality. I've known him a long time, and he is very high energy, and he's a go getter. So I, this, the, if you were to ask me before this what style was Jerry, I would have said he was an intraday day trader just based off his personality type. And I, I try to emphasize this point a lot, where we all need to find out what our, what our personality type is and our trading style will most likely mimic that personality style so if you're really laid back easy going slow mellow dude or do that then you're probably gonna be more of a swing to position trader if you're high energy and always got to be doing something you'll probably gravitate towards day trading just know the risks and rewards that go on with each one of those so i uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one um darren uh yeah <laughs> It's it's I got to do a bit more research on that one before I actually start flashing it to people because I don't want people to jump on it. This Darren says Merlin, you mentioned making six percent a day staking crypto. What exchange or platform? 
I'm not evading it. I can't remember because I've been, doing, I've been doing so much research on it. Uh, there was one site that was offering six percent per day. Honestly, it has there has to be some some catch there. And there's it is basically what it is these are all smart contracts that are based off of yield farming. And the, to get six percent per day, it's an unbelievable. I don't know. I just I don't believe it myself, but that's what they're posting and boasting. So I will uh, I'll let you know. I'll let you know sooner as soon as I get more detail on it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to put some of my own actual money into it because I, my worry is on the show like this where if I say something like oh check this out at six percent that someone's going to go dump their life savings in it thinking they're going to get six percent a day and all of a sudden it was a problem with the smart contract and they lose every single penny and then it's my fault. So uh, I'm not going to show you that stuff just yet, but I will, Darren. Don't worry about it. I will. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to shift gears here just a second. I know from a time constraint, I want to show you a couple, some cool things. You guys all know that the EFT or NFT, non fungible token thing, is absolutely booming right now. It's what seems like almost everybody is talking about. It's the hottest topic out there. And while some of it is interesting, I personally, I just don't, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't see the point. I'm not one that likes to really, I don't care about owning an original, right? If I if I want the Mona Lisa, I'll buy a copy of the Mona Lisa and stick it on my wall and go, there's the Mona Lisa. I could care less if it was the first original Mona Lisa ever. So I want to show you guys something here real quick. Um, let me see, I got to bring this one up. I need everyone to get ready to stare at their screen. So if you're, you've got me playing in the background, I need you to look at your screen here and get ready because I'm going to flash this up. Um, in just a second. Once, once this, it, it's on a loop, so it's gonna. Once it repeats, I want to show you guys this here. Um, but this is an NFT that just sold, so I'm gonna show you. you. Guys, ready? Ready to play? I want everyone to play this one real quick. Here you go. Think of a playing card. All right, you got five there to choose from. Pick your card. Got it in memory now. Okay, the NFT, the non fungible token. Now remove your card from that. All right, there it goes. And magically, huh, look at that. Your card is gone. Yes, every single one of you that did that. We want to try it again? You think I was, it's a sleight of hand. It's magic, right? This is one that just sold yesterday. I was on the live call as this sold in Clubhouse. And it's funny because it's an old magic trick. It's not really a magic trick. It's just something that's actually very, very simple. If you, if you, it took me on the second one, I figured it out. Very easy trick to figure out. Anyway, how much do you think that thing sold on, sold for? It was interesting. It sold, and basically, um, if, if you guys, I won't say anything. If you guys have figured out the trick, then you can feel free to chat. But I'll leave it there for anybody um, who who hasn't quite figured it out to watch it again because. Basically, somebody took this trick that I've seen many times before. I've actually seen this many times in a digital format. And what this person did is bit a nice graphical representation. And <laughs> Alan says, that is stupid as <laughs> Yeah, they just changed all the suits, right? So if you focus on the king of hearts, in the second reveal, every suit has been changed. So there is no king of hearts. It's now the king of diamonds. And you go, wow, the king of hearts is not there. And you think it magically disappeared. It's just, in my mind, it's very stupid. How much, how much do you think this sold for, guys? This is something that you could literally just, I could have uh, Bo or Tim or Jason, some guys that I work with on the Trading Academy in the video department, could build this out for me in about 10 minutes. How much do you think it sold for yesterday? Again, I was watching it live as a countdown, and I'm in the Clubhouse session on um, Clubhouse, and everybody's raving at how amazing this is, and what a great trick it is, and how 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 what this means to the NFT world and mag magicians around the world. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? This is so stupid. This guy, there's nothing unique about this other than somebody digitized an old trick. Alex Mooka says 10 million. I wish it was 10 million. No, uh, it sold for, in my opinion, way too much. So I'll zoom out here and I'll show you. So here's where it's at. And you'll, I scroll down and there you go. $20,000 this thing sold for. 20,000, and you can see right here, it's, this, it's the princess card trick. So basically the, all he did is just steal someone's magic put it on a digital format and got 20 grand for it. It's like, it's kind of embarrassing that those types of things are going for $20,000. This would have taken me less than a half hour to, to make on a graphics program. <laughs> I'm going to do a Trader Merlin coin, Brendan. I'm gonna, I am, I, I am. I just I got a million things going on. It, it's hard to do too many things. Anyway, I thought that was kind of an interesting one since uh, I was in this clubhouse session. What was so bizarre is all of these people, even Penn Gillette, you guys know a Penn and Teller? He came on to the call and was talking and he's like, you know, you guys are so amazing. And it was basically, let's all just sit around and blow smoke up this guy's ass about how great he is. And I'm thinking, this was a joke. 
the seller was the buyer? No, no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't the buyer. Some guy named 33, 33 bought it. So if you want to see the uh, the actual results, yeah, that would be pretty funny if he bought his own one. These are all the different people that were bidding on it. But man, I, I, just crazy. And then ultimately, this guy apparently he's some some guy who's been buying a bunch of these NFTs, you know. And of course, he's supporting the industry. But boy, I thought it was just absolutely crazy that that thing sold for twenty thousand dollars for a trick that is, let's be honest, rather stupid. Okay. Sorry, I, had, I just had to show you that one. Did someone pay penance? You know what, Alan? Hundred percent. In this day and age, I, I, I told you my my phrase that my students at university gave me. It says "non mi fido di nessuno," and I have to use hand gestures. Right now. "non mi fido di nessuno," and it basically means I don't trust anyone. Yeah, you know, very easily. Pen could have been um, paid or promoted. He also has his own NFTs that he's making and releasing right now, but. I just don't get the point. Like, why would somebody want to own that thing thinking that it's it's so valuable? Oh, it's one of a kind. No, I, I can go online and type in the, the name of the trick, which I forget what was it called, the princess trick, uh, the princess card trick. I can pull it up online and I can make my own and it's one of a kind. I, I, some, some of these NFT ones are a little bit ridiculous. Um, I think it was Tom sent me one, uh, a link to a Joe, a Joe Montana NFT, which was a beautiful picture like I, I loved it I really thought it was a cool picture but I'm not gonna spend ten fifteen thousand dollars for a picture of Joe Montana I love the guy I think he's the greatest quarterback ever yeah I know all you Tom Brady fans out there sorry I just I just can't do it um, just can't do it let me see I'll bring it up here so here is I'll show you this picture so here's the one we we're talking about um, so this is only four thousand but that's a cool picture. I love it. You know, I think he's, for me, he's the greatest quarterback ever. And I grew up in Northern California. So, you know, it does have special importance. But would I, rather, would I like to spend $4,000 on a picture of one of my heroes? Or would I rather spend $4,000 to take my significant other and travel around the world and, and go on vacation for, let's say, I don't know, I could go to Thailand for, for $4,000. I could fly. Yeah, I have two first class tickets that I use from points. I could spend an entire month in Southeast Asia living pretty well off $4,000. I would much rather do that and have an experience versus a picture or something. Oh yeah, no Banksy NFTs for me. Okay, true Alan, it is the brand that sells um, and, and it's or what is pushed, right? It's the brand that sells and what is pumped and promoted by the people out there. Anyway, it's just, you guys are all seeing it. It's um, Brendan was saying it's not a bubble. It's not, it's just a different way to sell things and different way to do transactions. Alex, you absolutely should. You should do Houston Astro, you, the Astros NFTs. Why not? Instead of having a player's card, you do some special kind of one that's one of a kind for each one. If you need help with that, I'm act, good to act as a consultant. I'm happy to help you out there, buddy. <laughs> anyway, I can. I owe you anyway. Um, all right, let me go to, I had some announcements and earning stuff for today. Now, let me go down my list here. I didn't have any really important stuff for today. Tomorrow is going to be an exciting day. And the reason it's going to be an exciting day is because I've got more Orville Redenbacher in the hopper. Oh, yes. It is going to be a popcorn trade of the day. Earnings season is on a roll. Last week, we had a bunch of major financial firms reporting. Ta-da. Tomorrow, on 420, smoke them if you got them. Brendan, I have a feeling I won't be seeing Brendan tomorrow. Or if I do see Brendan, his his uh, keyboard entries are going to look like this. This is what Brendan will look like when he's typing tomorrow. <laughs> Um, Netflix is reporting earnings. That's going to be aftermarket close. So for those of you who are option sellers, you might collect some pretty significant premium there. You know, I think it closed somewhere in the 500, 550 range today. So it tends to be very volatile when they report earnings tomorrow. So <laughs> um, Netflix reporting aftermarket close. Also aftermarket Intuitive Surgical, which is also a very volatile one, and CSX Corporation. If you are early birds and want to see the, the morning show, Johnson & Johnson, Lockheed Martin, Procter & Gamble, Abbott Labs, and Philip Morris. Those are all BMO or before market opens. Now on the earnings front for tomorrow, um, I <laughs> just won't see. <laughs> oh, Brendan, you're awesome. Um, for the economic calendar for tomorrow, another dull day for the U.S. We have pretty much nothing, but uh, the British pound does. If you're trading the uh, the British pound or versus any of the currency pairs out there, I want to keep an eye on that one. You do have 
uh, PPI, CPI, RPI, which I affectionately like to call the Magnum PI day tomorrow because you have all the PI numbers. Now, if you look over here, I'll bring up the British pound. Uh, there's your daily of the British pound. You can see that today's action with that really sharp slide in the dollar, um, the British pound just soared today. It really ripped through an area that I thought we'd see some hesitation right around 139, but man, I guess we jumped straight to 140, right? Um, that is your next stopping point after that. I mean, you're talking another full point. Gonna be up at that 141 mark. So on the big picture here, might gotta get David Warner back on because it almost looked like the, the British pound had started this nice little downtrend. All of a sudden, today's price action snapped that back up. So we'll see if this inflationary numbers out there, the CPI, PPI, or RPI for the UK have any impact on that going forward. Other than that, a lot, not a lot of others, some little pieces here for the Australian dollar, retail sales as well. Um, tomorrow, that's gonna be at 6.30 p.m. The Aussie dollar also had a nice little pop up today. I agree, cash is trash, but we got to use it, Brandon, for now. Cool. Uh, what else did I get here? Scrabble, we'll scratch off another place in the map. Well, I've been to Vietnam a few times. I, what I want to go to mostly right now would be Laos uh, and Burma. I've been to uh, Cambodia. I've been to Nepal. I've been to uh, Vietnam, um, Indonesia, right? So, yeah, I, there's a lot of places. There's a lot more to see, a lot, a lot more to see out there in this world and uh, getting a an autographed picture of Joe. I, I had the opportunity, I'll tell you guys a story long one time, um, to not only meet Jerry Rice, but to shake his hand and take some pictures with him. And he actually had a conversation with me for about 30 minutes about me and in my school. At that time, I think I was a freshman in college. I think, God, it was so long ago. Um, I was wearing the most hideous suit you could possibly imagine. I must look like Bozo the Clown, but he was one of the nicest guys. Um, that was more valuable than any picture or signed autograph I was having that experience. I've done the Greek islands. Oh, yeah. I've not been to Portugal, Randall. Uh, but, yeah, Greek islands. It's funny. My dad has been asking me. Uh, my dad is going in, I think, in July. He's done it the last couple of years where they rent, uh, they're rent. they on this big sailboat with, like, eight cabins on it, and they just sail around for a week. Oh, that sounds pretty awesome. Anyway. Cool. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have Scott McCormick on the show. So we'll talk about the Beck Report. As you guys know, Scott loves to look at charts. So I'm excited about that one. He'll be looking at bonds, equities, currencies, commodities. And we've seen some nice tr nice changes in trajectory for some of those asset classes. So that would be a, an interesting one as well. Uh, again, Jerry Baldwin was our guest today. If you want more information, you can go check him out. At Coach Jerry, uh, I was, he's got the long name on there. Um, it was, let me get the, the name. I think it was Coach Jerry Baldwin. Trading Coach Jerry. There we go. Trading Coach Jerry was his Instagram handle out there. He doesn't, I don't think he has any of the social media, other social media stuff right now, but um, he's just starting up here. But Trading Coach Jerry, if you guys want more information about Jerry Baldwin. And down here is a link tree so you can find out more information about anything he's doing there. Cool. That sounds good to me. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that show with Jerry. Interesting hearing someone use a one minute time frame. I don't see that too often, but hey, you know what? Different strokes for different folks. Hopefully you guys learned something today. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I know we got a lot of new people who started off chatting, but I didn't see them chatting near the end. So I think I might have lost the newbies, kept the regulars. That's okay. Anyway, I hope you guys all had a great day. I will see you tomorrow with Scott McCormick. If you have questions, comments, feedback, want a, a specific question covered, like we heard, got Tim's and Allen's today, send in your questions at tradermerlin at gmail.com or put them down below the YouTube video. Until then, happy trading, everybody. I will see you manana. Take care. Thank you.